Welcome to the Atlanta Opera, to the production of The Magic Flute. This production is a new production and was designed by David Higgins, who did both the costumes and the sets. It is a co-production between the Indiana University Opera Theater and the Atlanta Opera. And it was premiered in the Jacobs School of Music in Bloomington in the fall of 2009. When we started designing the project, we wanted to create a fantastical, magical, a very colorful production of the Magic Flute. Something that will res have respect to the ideas of the Freemasonry and to the tradition of older Magic Flutes, but will also speak directly to children and to the children within adults, within us. And so we came up with the idea of using a lot of puppetry in the show, a lot of colorful images, and specifically there is an influence of the American painter Maxfield Parrish in terms of color and texture throughout the production. The set is built out of toy blocks that make up this big wall that has different entrances, seven or eight doors and windows that allow us to introduce different scenic elements. The Magic Flute has 17 scene changes or vista in front of the audience's eyes. So you never in the show see a curtain coming in. This cast in Atlanta Opera is one of the best cast of Magic Flute that I have encountered. Some of the singers that sing here really can sing this on every stage in the world. We have Nicole Cabell singing Pamina, a beautiful, beautiful soprano, sings a lot of the Metropolitan Opera in Chicago. The role of Tamino, the prince, is sung by Sean Paniker, a young American tenor who made his Met debut a couple of years ago and also sings all over the place. The role of Zarasto is sung by Denis Sedov, a wonderful bass who was in the Young Artist Program at the Metropolitan Opera and in many other companies throughout the world. The role of Papageno, the bird catcher, is sung by Hugh Russell, who is very familiar uh, for the Atlanta Opera audience. The role of the Queen of the Night is sung by Kathleen Kim, who is a rising, wonderful young soprano that just made her Metropolitan Opera debut a couple of years ago. And in the role of the speaker, we have a fantastic local singer named Jason Hardy, who sings major roles all over the country. One of the things that really work well with this cast is that because it's a new production, they're really open to new ideas and to exploring things in ways that they didn't before. And the fact that they're all young uh, and kind of the same age group allows us to have dynamics and working relations that are the dream of every stage director. One of my favorite things about coming back to the Atlanta Opera is working with the course and with the course master, Walter Huff. I really find this course to be one of the finest in the country. Working with Walter Huff is a really amazing pleasure because he not only prepares the course in the most diligent and perfect way, but he also understands theater and he understands what needs to be done in order for something to work in a theatrical sense. And that is so rare to find. One of the interesting things about this production is that we are using a lot of different puppets. There's a huge dragon that chases Tamino at the very beginning of the opera. Then when Papageno appears, he's accompanied by 10 or 12 different colorful birds that he then tried to chase, and they're kind of making fun of him. It was a great opportunity for us to collaborate with the Atlanta Center for Puppetry Arts, who are operating some of our puppets that completely change this feeling of the magic flute and make it so light and so colorful. What I really like about the magic flute is the balance between laughter and seriousness, the human aspect, the jokes, everything is very meticulously balanced. And I think that in terms of action, it's a very difficult show to balance. And we wanted to create a whirlwind of action that then stops for the important moments that are supposed to touch the audience. And we go many times in the production from a very fast, dynamic change with a lot of people running on stage, with a lot of puppets coming in and out, into a very quiet, solemn, human moment. 
And that's, I think, one of the genius of Mozart, is that he knew the theatrical pacing, he knew it so well, and that's what we're trying to capture in this production. The Magic Flute is very dear and important to me as a person because it's the first opera that I've ever seen. And I was a very young man at the time and I remember that I was totally fascinated and enamored with all those creatures and uh, with all those special effects and with the story. So for me, most important is to tell a story that will touch people and that will excite them. So when I direct it, I, I, I have so much fun and when I planned it, it was one of the biggest joys of my life. To be able to do that again with a very exciting and young cast is a great gift. And I'm hoping that it would really make the audience be interested in seeing more operas. I really do think that it's a perfect first opera for people because it has elements that are mythological and fantastical and at the same time very human and touching and meaningful and I hope that this production captures it.